to green the federal executive council in the course of the week directed all new vehicles generators or tricycles procured by the government and its agencies must be powered by compressed natural gas cng solar or electric this is in line with the administration's commitment to ensure energy security drive utility and cut high fuel costs in the country this and other issues took center stage at a weekly federal executive meeting. It will now be a leveler for all motorists passing through. Even President Bola Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shetima will pay tolls, just like everyone else, to access federal airports in the country. The first approval that we sought and obtained is in respect of mandatory payments of access fees by all visitors at our federal airport toll gates nationwide. The Federal Executive Council meeting also approved the suspension of the controversial 0.5% cyber security levy on electronic bank transactions. The position of government is that that policy has been suspended. The cyber security levy has been put on hold. It is being reviewed by government. For now, it is on hold. Another matter that was considered with a resolution passed is the need to ease the visa processing protocol, which has become cumbersome for tourists and investors. Uh, the Minister of Interior is aiming to achieve, it, achieve visa processing within 48 hours visa process meaning that if you put in your application because the whole process is now being computerized it will go through a lot of checks uh, the aim is that within 48 hours that you apply for nigerian visa you're going to get it because everything will be online now the lagos calabar coastal road got the backing of the federal executive council for the commencement of section two phase one fake also awarded uh, section two of phase one of the lagos calabar coastal highway the final certificate is given when the job is totally uh, done or about to be concluded so that all issues are, you know, sorted out. And we've been doing a lot of engagement. Everything about Costa Road followed the, uh, you know, due process. President Bola Tinubu's administration is already on a countdown to the one-year mark. But the president is also working to ensure Nigerians directly feel the impact of governance and an improvement in the standard of living. And in Lagos, the presidential CNG initiative is to drive down and manage transportation costs for Nigerians by utilizing the, ch the cheaper gas alternative that is abundant but currently underutilized in Nigeria. And your media, Jake, gives us uh, an update on the launch of the initiative in Southwest. This meeting is to interface with all stakeholders, both professionals and artisans to drive the message of CNG-powered vehicles and its contributions to a substantial increase in carbon emissions. It not only seeks to revolutionize Nigeria's transport sector with cleaner energy, but also commits to upskilling and training about 25,000 auto technicians in the process. Every filling station the way they have petrol, kerosene, and diesel to also have a CNG dispenser. At the panel session, Professor Iola Oni urged government to ensure there is balance between demand and supply so that Nigerians' expectation will not be short-lived. We must not make a mistake of over-sensitizing people to roll out the conversion and the vehicles in the end, they will not be able to assess this facility. In layman's language, government representative states the benefit of CNG-powered vehicles. Two vehicles were deployed from Abuja to go to Ibadan. The same kind of vehicles, and they got to Ibadan. When they wanted to refill, they found that the, the petrol-driven vehicle had to spend 50-something thousand naira to refill, whereas the CNG-powered vehicle spend just about 27,000 naira. I mean, there are thousands of CNG vehicles all over the world. You don't hear about explosion of CNG vehicles. But you see, yeah, that's about petrol vehicles. So we always need to switch something that's safer. Drivers, riders, automobile mechanics and artisans say 
they are ready to align with the CNG revolution as it is an escape from our cost of fuel. Be sincere is a new development to us because what we have been facing concerning this spoil and at least if this thing have come, at least it will change many things to our people. There should be another way that we will be a circle for every that trade. So, and that is exactly what, what is happening with uh, CNG. Every stakeholder here agree that this policy will not just favor the rich, but also the poor in the society. And one of the stakeholders highlighted that federal government should approve a policy that slashes 50% on import duties for all CNG imported vehicles. I am Bidia Ajay, the TVC News. Also, in its bid to meet up with the demands of Nigeria in terms of manufacturing, the Presidential Committee on CNG paid a visit to one of its combustion center at the Lagos Ibado Expressway. The team led by the program director of the Presidential Initiative on Compressed Natural Gas told the facility of Mikaino Company that runs on 100% gas and appreciates the level of compliance to world best practices with its seamless conversion process of vehicles to CNG. He admits that questions and doubts on maintenance and sustainability are valid from Nigerians, but wants citizens to look at the bigger picture. Of course, there will be hiccups, there will be issues, but we will go back inwards, we will solve those issues, and we will move forward as a nation. Taiwan did not start by making perfect vehicles, or neither did China, neither did Korea or, or Japan, or even America. Yeah, there were mistakes that were made along the way. We must be confident enough to be able to accept that mistakes will happen. There will be errors, there will be uh, inadequacies, but we will continue, we will emphasize the use of Nigerian products. And that's what we did in this presidential initiative. Beyond the gas-powered vehicle is also the drive to utilize gas for all facets of Nigerian economy. Nigeria has gas and we're going to use our gas to produce electricity, to produce the, uh, uh, the inputs to our, to, our, to our fertilizer plant, to drive our agricultural revolution, to drive our vehicles to ensure that Nigerians can produce cheaper. The company has successfully collaborated with the federal government in its CNG revolution and promises to do more towards a better economy. The, 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 the gas supply becoming more and the saving of foreign exchange is becoming more. Mikano is assembling CNG. We start with assembling of CNG. We have ordered for so many buses for the government, all of them CNG. There are so many stations built up. Mikano also built in a station along Shagamu to, 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 to fill fuel for the vehicles. The president, Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners, says is optimistic of the ease this revolution will bring on all category of Nigerians. It's a very good development, but the, it's going to start in phases. If I had the DG right, right now the combustion is for petrol vehicles and the next phase is going to be for diesel vehicles. So even for the petrol vehicles, there is going to be a lot of savings in terms of the consumption of petrol vis-a-vis -vis the uh, consumption of the gas. The target is to ensure at least a million vehicles run on gas in the next few months with a priority on commercial vehicles and tricycle. I am media at JB, CBC News. I think this is one of the best things that can happen now, you know, considering the fact that, you know, we have a lot of petrol vehicles around the country. And now that they, they say this will, this will be in phases, the first phase, of course, will be the petrol vehicles then before they go to the diesel vehicles. You know, if you have the CNG, I think it would be a good one where people can actually buy against to fill, the, to fill their car. Uh, it, it's a good one. What do you think? Well, I, I think it's also going to you know, place a lot of burden on people. So you want to look at the fact that uh, it's, they're not converting these things. The conversion is not done for free. Of course. So yeah, you have to the co it. yeah. So the cost of conversion, yeah. and then um, so also a lot of people are looking at you know these issues from the point of view of um, um, they're saying it's also going to affect the MDAs. So um, for the people that the government have all already bought cars for, you know, are we going to see them doing the conversions and all that? But I mean, it's a new uh, trend in Nigeria, and we know that Nigerians like to follow the trend. I'm talking about converting to CNG, so we'll see, like, who's the first person to buy a CNG car amongst the celebrities, uh, who are the people to do the conversions first and all that. But, yeah, we'll follow it up and we'll see how it's... I think uh, one thing we should also look at is the environmental challenge that will come along with this. Yeah. Um, so, I think Nigeria, you know, I was listening to the Nasara state government, uh, state governor, I think like two weeks ago, uh, where he said that Nigeria have an abundance even gas than even petrol, you know. And that we need to make use of it. We need to we need to harness it. 
And I think that to the large extent, well, if we can do that, you know, we can be able to put, you know, get another aspect of where money can come in, look at generation revenue. Well, so, but you know that when it comes to this issue, you mm. there, there are always, um, you know, um, the problem of um, how we're able to plug the, the loopholes of uh, managing those resources. So, like, you, you get to hear in the discussions about how... Um, um, fuel, how crude oil um, is being siphoned and the Ghana people is trying to you know, so it's not about having these things in abundance, it's not always about these policies, about how much we manage them to ensure that you know, the, the average person in Nigeria gets to benefit, like maybe you have all the other people in the Gulf states where they are basically surviving on oil money also feeling the impact of that money um, from the government so can we get to a, a point where Nigerians, you know, start benefiting from the fact that we have a large deposit of gas because we've plugged all the loopholes, so government is actually earning as it should from these resources and distributing it to everyone. You know, aside from earning from these huge resources, one thing must be very certain. If Nigeria is transiting from petrol to CND, um, it must be available for everybody and must come at a very cheaper price. Yeah, because we know how to start all these beautiful policies. No, uh, no, this... no, 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 no um, um, cashless policy. And yeah. then sometimes you don't find cash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No, but I think that it's a good one that the federal government is bringing this up. You know, but we should be able to find them in abundance where we can get all of these things. All right. And then when all of these things are being put in place, it makes it more easier for the masses to get it at a very cheaper price. Okay, when we come back from uh, live from Abuja, we'll have more for you and we'll go straight to headline news. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. <laughs>